Well, welcome to February and uh, well done on getting through your exams. Thank you for all of the hard work that you put into revising, into disciplining yourself to do them. I hope they've gone as well as you'd hoped and I'm, I'm sure you will find out in the next few days how things are. Of course, I also hope that you're starting to make, that you feel that you're starting to make progress in your studies. And most important, most, most important, I hope that you're looking forward positively to 2021. And I know that that's hard. You know, I'm, I'm saying it because I know it's difficult because we're in this odd place. The world is facing a pandemic at the moment. The school is currently um, in session, but acting but, but, but remotely. So we have some of you here and some of you at home. And that's, of course, tricky. But I tell you what, 2021, it's going to get better. And I know I'm making myself a hostage to fortune by saying that, but it will get better. And that's, I think, my message for the morning uh, and for the uh, please for you to take forward in the next few weeks. The pages are turning. We are in February. It is no longer January. Things are going to get better. So I'm going to share with you two thoughts this morning. Uh, I've, got, I've got to say, I've got to be honest, neither of them is particularly earth shattering nor are they particularly original. In fact, I think one or two, they, they may even have crossed my lips before in different forms. Um, so I, I, I haven't suddenly invented the secret of life, but I do think these things are worth repeating in the world that we're, you know, that with the challenges we're facing and the world in which we're living. So uh, the first will relate to your studies, and our relationship with the pandemic. So it's trying to put those two thoughts together. And my second thought is, once again, relating to the pandemic, but also to how we cope with life. So what we'll have is two, two thoughts, really. And we've got a little bit of music as well, because as you know, I always love to hear music um, as part of the assembly, and I hope you will too. So, and that's, that's what it is that we, we've got to share this morning.
Well, as I said, the first of the, my, my thoughts relates to our studies and to the pandemic, how, how we deal with the pandemic, look at the pandemic. And it isn't easy, you know, studies are not easy and we are facing unprecedented challenges, definitely. And I am, I've said it, but I'm grateful to you for all you are doing. And of course, grateful to the teachers for the amount of time and effort and creativity that they're putting into the learning that you are giving, being given. But how do we deal? Let's talk about studies. How do we deal with the questions like, you know, when, when am I going to get better in, I don't know, history or physics or English or French or whatever it is that is causing you to scratch your head at the moment. You know, will I be a success in my public examinations? Will whatever form those examinations are going to take? There's another uncertainty. And we're still waiting, incidentally, if you are facing public examinations, we're still waiting to hear uh, what form the government uh, is, is going to have those take. And as soon as we know, we will let you know. Then you've got those other questions like, am I ready for life? Am I ready uh, for, I don't know, love and friendships? Uh, and of course, the, the, the big one on the other side, you know, will, when will the pandemic end? And of course, there's, there's one answer I would say to all of these things. Um, and that answer, two really, really simple words. Not yet, not yet, but it will. So we've got the not yet, the two simple words, but it will happen, it will happen. Um, now the trouble with not yet is there's an element of thinking, oh, well, if it's not yet, I've just got to sit around and wait for something to happen and then it'll be in someone else's hands and I am, I am completely passive in this process. And that is not what not yet means. Um, if, I suppose, if we think about the pandemic for a, a moment, if scientists had done that and thought, well, you know, who knows how this is going, you know, someone else will sort this out, um, we would not have, we wouldn't understand what this virus is. We wouldn't have treatments. We wouldn't have vaccines and increasing numbers of vaccines. Uh, and we wouldn't have future proofing of those vaccines going on at the moment. So actually, not yet means I am active in the process of, of making something happen. Those wonderful people, men, women and men, have worked incredibly hard in a skilled way to find answers to the pandemic. Uh, and not yet is becoming now. We understand the virus. We have treatments, we have vaccines, we understand the variants and that there will be more variants and there are vaccines coming for those as well. That's amazing. And that's the attitude I would really urge you to take to your studies in the days and weeks ahead. It may not be that you have done brilliantly in these examinations, I hope you have, but it may be that there are things you still need to improve. In fact, you wouldn't be human if that wasn't the case. So, not yet, but you are going to do something about it. There's an amazing piece of work um, done by a lady called Professor Carol Dweck. Uh, she's a psychologist, an educationalist, and a scientist. And her, she's reflected on the power of this phrase, not yet, and uh, in essence, she says, if you embrace challenge and change, it does amazingly fascinating things to your brain. Um, because neural activity in our brains, when we are faced with an error or a problem, is very, very considerable. It's very active. Our brains, uh, if we could have a, uh, like a thermal camera on our brains, what we would find is when we are facing a challenge, they become hot. They burn hot, and there's a lot of things going on. Uh, so that is a good thing, because 
these, when we are doing this, our, our neuro, the neural activity is very strong. And so not only are our neural connections active, but they are being strengthened. And even better, young people, for you in particular, when we are young, as we strengthen and use, uh, strengthen our neural connections, we can also make new ones by facing these challenges. So not yet, it's not simply a way of getting better at uh, mathematics uh, or whatever the subject is, but it's also a way of uh, refining your mind, getting your mind stronger and better and becoming a stronger and finer human being. So in your studies, just as scientists have shown in their dealing with the pandemic, we must struggle and we can overcome. If we just embrace that sense of not yet, don't allow things to bring you down. Don't let them get on top of you. You are amazing. I say this to you all when you come to the college, you're amazing people. Embrace that and use the days and weeks ahead to become that little bit more amazing, please. We're going to uh, hear a little bit of music now. I hope you will enjoy it.
Well, I said I was going to talk to you also about the challenges of life and the pandemic in a slightly different way. And um, I thought about all sorts of things to talk to you about actually here. Um, I had actually wanted to talk about conspiracy theories a little bit and why we are so, uh, well, why some people appear to be drawn to them. You know, don't have the vaccine. I don't know, um, you know, X and Y caused this to happen in this election or whatever it is. Uh, but all I think I would say to you is in dealing with life, don't listen to conspiracy theories. I will probably do say something about that later in the term and unpack it and the psychology of conspiracy theories, but maybe not today. My other thought for before I get onto the heart of this is as we face the, the pandemic and our parts in it, I think I'd ask you all to aim to be patient and not to catastrophize. Patience is hard. I, I find it really hard. I've got to be honest. There have been moments where I've thought, oh, I don't, I'm not enjoying this. I, don't, I, I want to do what I want to do. I want you back in the school. I want us to be together. I want to be able to make the choices in my life. But the whole of the world is facing this. So we've got to be patient. But I'd also urge you not to catastrophize. Do not make this worse in your mind than it is. Uh, we are still privileged in where, wherever we are to access this wonderful institution, to have a fantastic education and to be part of this community. So it'll, you know, as I said earlier, it can be okay and we can make the best of this. I was, uh, heard a story I wanted to share with you about a man called Aaron Collins. And Aaron Collins sadly died a few years ago at the age of 30. And in, he was a nice chap, and, and in his will, he left, uh, well, it was, actually it wasn't in his will, it was, a, it was his last wish, he was, um, he, his, which he passed on to his brother. And he said to his brother, and he wasn't a wealthy man, uh, but he had uh, some money, and he said to his brother, I want you to go to a restaurant and find a waiter or waitress and give them a $500 tip. And, you know, $500 is a lot. If you think about it, um, a, a waiter or waitress might earn between $10 and $15 an hour. So we're talking about anywhere between 30 and 50 hours of work, which is a working week. So a big tip for a waiter or waitress. So that's exactly what his brother did. He went uh, and found, a, went to a restaurant, had a meal, and gave the waitress, it was the waitress at the end of the meal, a $500 tip. And he explained to her why he was doing it. He said, I'm doing this because this was the last wish of my brother. And she said, that is amazing. That kindness is amazing. I will never forget that in my entire life. This um, has now uh, become a, uh, a movement. People um, are, I'm just looking for what they call it, Aaron's Last Wish. If you look that up, you'll find it and, uh, on the web and you'll see there are many people trying to do the same thing, uh, giving that gift to somebody who's not expecting it. And the, the way it's put is, actually, we are a little hardwired, particularly at the moment, to think that bad things happen, that, you know, bad, only bad things happen. And of course, this is a little way, a tiny, a small, small way, a generous way, but a small way, a small action, which can show that that's not the case. And for some of those waiters and waitresses who've benefited, it's been really amazingly life-changing for them. Not the money, but the kindness. The money, of course, helps, but the kindness is crucial. And then I look at the pandemic and what we're all experiencing. And what I worry about for you and for all of us is our mental health. It's been a tough, tough year, honestly. And uh, many people are struggling with isolation, dislocation, um, you know, a lack of connection to 
those who we all need, actually. Um, and I would urge you to consider very, very much how you look after yourself, how you are kind to yourself. Firstly, I think we know we are living a little bit in, in isolation, so do be aware of your mental health, please. And that means sleep and you know normal stuff. Make sure you sleep, make sure you exercise as far as you're able to, eat proper, properly, get balance. But probably more important, going back to um, Aaron's last wish, is to reach out a hand to others, to help others around you, connect with others, give kindness in, your, in words and in thoughts, let others know you're thinking about them. Uh, you know, try to give a compliment that means something to people. Don't just say, I don't know, you look good today or something, you know, that's just yeah, easy words. Try to say, well, I really appreciated it when you did this, or I thought what you did then was amazing. Uh, you know, but, but, but try to look for something specific that that individual has done or has given. Because I have to say that I think, you know, in this world that we are facing, um, kindness will be essential. You know, making sure that the vaccines don't just get to the those who can afford it and by that i mean societies that can afford it but making sure that we are spreading what you know we are making sure that we are giving what is necessary to all who need that is real kindness it's not easy it's not easy in the sense of the vaccine, it's going to cost money, it's going to mean distribution, it's going to make difficult choices between who should receive it and who does not yet. For instance, we ourselves have got to make those kind of difficult choices as well. How do we use our time for the best? To nourish ourselves, but also to give to those who are in need. So, if you like, that's uh, my, my thought for us all. In, um, in life and what, what we're dealing with and what is to come is one you've heard me say before, it's in the college ethos, but it is there for a reason. It is, it is an essence of life. It's to be kind, not nice. Nice, saccharine um, Nice is all about perception. Kind is sometimes difficult. Kind is tough. Kind is making decisions that will make each of us may be better, stronger, but make our societies smoother, more function better. So do remember the notion behind Aaron's last gift, giving to those who don't expect uh, and helping to make the world appear a better place for those around us. That's a huge thing that each of us can do. Anyway, that's it uh, from me. I hope that you will have a really good February and that you have a productive time. Remember in your studies, it can be. It may not be yet, but it can be. And if we do everything we can with kindness, we will make our little world and the wider world a better place. And speaking of a better place, we will finish once again with some beautiful music, uh, which I hope will nourish your soul. <laughs>